Amen. Thank God for another opportunity to be in his house again. Uh, and like we were saying, it was supposed to be dad tonight, but uh, I'm filling in. <laughs> so just remember him. He hated to miss, but he wasn't, wasn't feeling good at all. But like I was saying earlier, I'm grateful to know a God that doesn't change, that I can count on him to be the same today as he was yesterday. And then he's not going to change his mind about me, Jesse. His word, what he says is true. And what he says will come to pass, will come to pass. Amen. Um, I've been reading again this week. Well, I'll tell you that in a minute. First off, how many of you have read Revelation, the book of Revelation? A few? Okay. <laughs> Steve's shaking his head. Um, I used to be a little leery of reading Revelation because I just, there's a lot to take in, Nick. There's a lot to process. But uh, here recently, I, I, I've read through it, and, and, and then I read a book by this uh, minister, um, Amir Sarfati is his name. He's Israeli born, lives, still lives in Israel. He can actually see the valley of his house. From his house, he can see the valley of Megiddo, which is cool. Um, but he wrote a book that I was reading I, I went through Revelation and then I, I read his book and I'm going back and studying again. Um, and it's his book is called Revealing Revelation. And I've gotten a lot of things out of his book and I, I appreciate his ministry. And like I said, he's he's a natural born Israeli, um, been a general in the Israeli armed forces. So I believe he knows what he's talking about, you know, in relation to Jewish uh, customs and, and the heritage there. So at any rate, I just I felt led to share this tonight because it really it blessed me because I hadn't realized it until I was reading through it this this last time because I used to be like that. I was like, just I hope I'm not here. <laughs> I hope I'm not here. I don't I don't want to see all that. I don't you know. Because there's some frightful things in here, and and you've got you've got your different views. You've got people who believe that it's all allegorical, meaning that it's not literal. I believe it is literal. Where it says as or like, now that's more like an allegory, you know, uh, relating it to like something. But when it talks about these beasts coming up out of the bottomless pit in the time of tribulation. That's pretty fact of the matter, the way that it states it. So if you believe God to be the creator of humans and the creator of all things good, and you know you, you've, you believe that he wrote the other parts of this book, you might want to read this one too. And, and I get it. I mean, I was apprehensive for a lot of years. But here's the thing. There's nothing to be afraid of. I used to think there was. But now I understand there's nothing to be afraid of, Cindy. Because 365 times in this word, one for every year, every day of the year, except for leap year, God says, do not be afraid. And I have no reason to be afraid. And if God wrote, spoke through Moses and wrote Genesis uh, through Leviticus or Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, he wrote that those things, then I gotta believe that this is part of his words too. And I need to be studying it. I need to be reading it. Don't avoid it. It's nothing to be afraid of. I used to think it was. But the more I've read and understood, I, I'm not gonna get into pre-trib or mid-trib because honestly, I haven't studied to the point that I have a good foundation. And know which way that I believe. I just believe we're going out of here someday. That's all I know. I don't know when exactly. 
But Jesus says you'll know, you can discern the weather, you can discern the seasons, so you should be able to discern the, the signs of the times. And wouldn't you agree with me that the times we're living in, these are the last days. These are the last days. And you, you see how things are speeding up. This is October 2022. I, I, I'm blown away. I mean, it, it, I still feel like I should be like 16 or 17, but I've been married almost 20 years and I have a kid who's getting ready to drive next year. That's crazy. Time has just flown. And it seems to be just getting quicker, but God said he would do that. Because what do we got to do? Whether, whether we go pre-trib, pre-tribulation, or we go mid-tribulation, I don't know, but just be ready. Because you don't know that tomorrow's coming. I don't know that tomorrow's coming. And I love it, this minister that I've listened to a lot recently, he says, perhaps today, it's his saying, perhaps today, and I've thought about that and wrote it down, perhaps today. It could be my day. Honestly, I, I, I was, and I don't want to get political or get on some topic that, you know, divides people, but I've heard several stories just this week, at least two, of two men, two young men, two otherwise healthy young men just dropping dead. Actually, three, three. Now, I'm not going to say that I don't know whether they got the COVID shot or not, but that's what people are saying. There's, that's their first speculation. And I, I don't mean to, I don't know if anybody got it. I don't know that's your business, but I'm just saying things are happening, y'all. At least three healthy, otherwise healthy young men just dropped dead. And to say all that, I just, be ready. I mean, COVID shot aside, any one of us could just drop dead, Jesse. It's God's timing. Not mine, not yours, not, not my choice, not your choice. So be ready. Perhaps today, wake with that thought. Perhaps today, Kaylin, Jesus is either coming back or maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to see him. And, you know, used to as a young Christian, I thought, well, I want to I want to live my life and I want to do this and I want to do that. Didn't you do that when you were younger, Jesse? Maybe that I don't want Jesus to come back just yet. I want to get married and I want to have kids. And but let me tell you this, looking back, that was a silly thought that I had because nothing absolutely nothing can compare to what awaits you in eternity. Do you know that? Do you believe that? What God has created for those that love him, your eye has not seen, your ear hasn't heard, neither can has entered, even in, you haven't even imagined it. In other words, it says entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. You can't even begin to fathom. And now that I understand that, I'm like, nothing of this world can compare to what God has planned for us, Cindy. And, you know, I think about it. If, if Jesus came back today, what would we be doing? You know, you see all these um, cartoons or commercials and things, and, and they talk about heaven or whatever, and you see angels, these little, we're little angels floating around, sitting on clouds, playing harps. Well, I've never touched a harp in my life. I don't know if I would know what to do with one. But I have a feeling that there's a little more to it than that. Amen. That there's going to be some kind of service that you and I are going to be doing to God Almighty. We're going to be serving Him somehow or another. There's going to be rewards handed out, is what Jesus says. He said, Behold, I come quickly and my, I'm bringing my reward with me. I, I, I don't know what those rewards are exactly. Do you? But I'm anxious to find out. So my mind is more these days on eternity 
than on this temporal life. And I hope yours is too, because we've got so much to look forward to. Eternity's a long time. You can't even begin to fathom it. I can't. I try to sit and imagine. You, can, you just can't comprehend it. But we've got so much to look forward to. And if you'll look with me in Revelation, we're going to read a few places. Because I thought this was, was interesting. <clears throat> that it actually says that you'll be blessed if you'll do the work, do the things that are contained in this book. So in order to do the things that's contained in this book, you might want to read it. It's God's word. And it's nothing to be afraid of. It is nothing to be afraid of. Read with me. We're going to start at chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, unto John, or to show unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Here's the verse I want you to listen to. Verse three. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So most scholars believe this book was written, John recorded his vision, um, this revelation, I think it was like AD 80, maybe. Yeah, like from 80 to 90 AD is when they, most scholars believe it was written. Um, so Jesus was telling John then the times at hand. The time was at hand even then. But get that in verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And if you look in verse 1, it says, To show unto his servant things which must, must shortly come to pass. Shortly. It doesn't necessarily mean that the events of Revelation are going to happen soon, but that when they do begin to happen, they're going to happen quickly and in, in, in quick succession. So I want to be ready. I don't know about you all. Don't be afraid of this last book of the Bible. Read it and do what Jesus writes, sends letters to the seven churches in chapters two through four. And if you recall, God, I believe it was through Diane, spoke to this place and said that this place was going to be like the church of Philadelphia. So if you read about the church of Philadelphia in chapter three, yeah, around down around verse seven. Let's just go ahead and read this. Verse 7 of chapter 3. Now, mine's in red, so that means this is Jesus speaking. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name, 
He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. I'm pleased that God has grouped this church in with that church if he labeled us. So I want to stay where God has planted me. And I want to do what he's called me to do, don't you? To be doing the works that he's called you to do because Jesus said that only those that do the will of my Father will enter in. Amen? All right, so one other place, or actually a few other places. So we've got that in chapter 1 where it says, Blessed is he that readeth and hear the words. There's six more places in this book that says you're blessed. And I want to point those out to you. And I want I'm, the point of this message is read God's word. Don't be afraid of this book. Because I don't know, like I said, I, I don't know if we'll have to go through half of the tribulation, the first three and a half years. I don't know. I don't understand all that. <laughs> I'll just be honest. But whatever the case, whether we go at the beginning, whether we go at three and a half years, whether Jesus comes tomorrow, be ready is the point. Be ready. Be instant, in season and out. Go with me to chapter 14, verse 13. <clears throat> chapter 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Remember we talked about getting rewarded for your works? You know, you, you get into heaven. Heaven and, and eternal life is yours based on the work that Jesus did. But somehow, and I don't, I don't plan, I don't, claim to understand all that either you're going to be rewarded according to your works that you've done and there it says again but blessed are the dead which die in the lord from henceforth and we'll get to rest from all our labor amen i like that idea i like to rest <laughs> i don't know about y'all but i like to rest the next one is chapter 16. Look at me. Look with me. Um, don't look at me. Look at, with me at chapter 16, verse 15. Again, the, these are the words of Jesus again. He says, behold, I come as a thief. Now, is a thief going to come to your door and give you advance warning that he plans on breaking in? No, he's going to come unaware so we plan for things like that by putting up security cameras, putting extra locks on the doors or on our windows or whatever, leaving lights on when you leave the house, blah, blah, blah. So they think somebody's home. That's preparation. So the same way that we prepare for a thief, let's prepare for Jesus coming. It could be tomorrow, perhaps today. Amen. Blessed is he that watcheth, oh, and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So remember we talked about Jesus giving us that cloak of righteousness, that robe of righteousness. Blessed is he who keeps it. Amen. Keep it clean. Amen. By walking holy, holy. Staying away from sin, eschewing evil like Job did. Amen. That's our calling. That's what we're supposed to do. Blessed is he that watches. How many times in the New Testament does Jesus tell us in the Gospels, in the four Gospels, he says to watch and pray, watch and pray. So that leads me to believe that I need to be on my, on my toes, on my knees, literally, but um, I need to be watching every day, thinking that maybe, perhaps today, Jesse, Jesus is coming back. And like I've, <laughs> Dad, Dad says often, you know, he used to, and I, and I get it. He missed his mom. And he used to um, complain to me. And I just, I just want to go home. And I finally told him, he's like, Dad, just look at it this way. Every day you wake up, you're one day closer. You're one day closer to going home. Whether that be by the grave 
or whether Jesus returns. But in the meantime, we've got work to do. Amen. We've got to be watching and telling people Jesus is coming. Because if you read the rest of this book and you believe what God said, you got to believe what he says here in Revelation. You got to take it too. We can't just say, I'm not going to read that book. It scares me and I, I'm not going, not going to read it. There's only 65 books in the Bible and I'm not going to read that last one. I'm not even counting it. We can't do that. In fact, in that last 66 book of the Bible, it says anyone who takes away from this word is cursed and all these plagues will be upon him. So I ain't about to nix it. I'm not going to nix Revelation. Neither should you. Read it. Don't be afraid of it. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear if we trust in God Almighty. Because He will provide and He will shield and protect us. Blessed is He that watcheth and keepeth His garments. Now go with me to, um, got a few more here and then I'll hush. I bet y'all wish Dad was here. Wouldn't be that long. Got that long windy girl night. Chapter 19, go with me. 19, verse 9. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Who's he marrying? The church. Yes. Are you going to have your wedding garment on? Are you going to be called to that supper? And if you remember, we talked about the Jewish wedding ceremony. It's a lengthy ordeal. Um, you kind of see that in The Chosen, the, the first season. Yeah, it, it's like seven days long. Ha! Um, they, they really got into celebrating a wedding, you know? But blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Thank you, God. I'm looking forward to that. And I won't have to go dress shopping, Jesse. I won't have to worry about what I'm wearing because I will have been given that precious garment that Jesus paid for. Think about that. Think what he did for you. I hope you understand the magnitude of his love. Because he literally, he didn't have to do it. He left his throne to come to this earth and to be like you and me, like dad says, so we could be like him. And I want to honor him with this life that I've been given and to keep my garment clean so I'll be ready to go to that marriage supper. Because you and I, like you said, we are the church. We are the bride. We are his bride. What a magnificent time that's going to be. I hope you're heavenly minded. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Because like I said, things of this earth, they're so temporal. You know how it is. You, 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 you want something. You think you want something so bad. And then you finally get it. And then after like a week, you're like, what, what did I work so hard for? It's not all it's cracked up to be. That's the temporal things of this world. That's the difference. What we're working for in the spirit is eternal. I believe, I can't remember exactly where it's at, but the Bible says that the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that you don't see are eternal. That's the ones I'm working for. Are you laying up treasures, doing the works of the Lord, being a witness, living holy to honor him? Or are you working to gain treasures of this world? I hate to tell you, but those treasures, they're going to fade. They're going to burn. They're going to rot. They're going to fall apart eventually. But the love of God the relationship with, that I have with Jesus Christ, it's only going to get better. Because I can't imagine, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. I can't imagine standing in his presence. I'd probably be on my face. 
Like when we were singing day by day, I think about that when we sing that song. That I'll fall on my face before God Almighty. Because think of the glory to finally be in his presence, uninhibited by the sinful flesh, being walking around in that glorified body, finally home where we belong. I'm excited. And I hope you, after tonight, I hope you're excited. If you weren't, I hope you're looking forward to eternity. And I'm hoping that you'll go home and you'll start reading Revelation because there's a lot of stuff in there. I got three more and I'm going to hush. Chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they, listen to this, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. I'm going to reign. Remember we talked about how the royal language that was used in creation that God made us to have dominion over Amen. this earth. And even then, even when Jesus returns, and, and this is what it's talking about, that first resurrection, when you were resurrected from the dead, that first time he made you new. And the second death it's got no power over me. It will have no power over me because all it's going to do is put me in God's presence. It has no power except what God gives him. Amen. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. I can't wait. Let's go to chapter 22. Do what? Uh, no, seven. I think. Unless I wrote it down wrong. 22, verse seven. Yeah. Behold, I come quickly. These are Jesus' words. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And like we said earlier, how are you going to keep it if you don't know what it says? Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. One more and I'm going to hush. 22 verse 14. That, oh, that's the one you were mentioning. Yeah. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Wow. Wow. <laughs> So what's that tree of life? It's that tree that was planted and that was in the midst of the garden that God, they weren't allowed to, well, they weren't allowed to touch the tree of knowledge and of good and evil. And then he, he, he put after the fall, he put the two angels to guard the garden to keep them from touching the tree of life, lest they live forever. So the tree of life is immortality. The tree of life is what you get to touch. And you'll, you'll get to live forever. But would you want to live forever in these old bodies? No. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't want to have migraines for eternity. Or a backache or a crooked neck for eternity. <laughs> that glorified body. Shh, that glorified body will live forever in eternity in God's presence. And that's all I had tonight. But do you know how blessed you are to know Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. I, I don't think some people know truly the fullness of it because you, you'd be beaming if you, you just be, if you truly knew what he's done for you Amen. and see where he's brought you from and what he's given you at no cost to you. That's what I can't get over. It doesn't cost me anything. I mean, you, some might say, well, you have to give up your life. But what I gain, Amen. it can't compare. Amen. And 
what does he say? He says he came to give us life more abundantly. Amen. So I can have abundant life here right. if I follow the instructions. Amen. If I follow Christ and, and try to live as he did because he did it right. He honored the father. He kept his word and he did everything that he was called to do. Are you living your best life? Are you living in the light of eternity? You can, only you can answer that. I have to answer it for myself. But I'm looking forward to that day. I hope you are. Don't be afraid. We have nothing to be afraid of. Even if we have to, like I said, I don't know enough about the scripture to, to, Say I believe one uh, belief or the other pre or or mid trib. I I can't tell you, but all I know is be ready, because you don't know if we're, any of us are gonna make it home tonight. If you ride with Steve, we might go across the new bridge. I don't know. He's tried to a couple of times. I might be in jail. I might not make it home either. I don't know. I'm kidding, but I'm looking forward to Jesus coming back. I'm looking forward to getting my arms around his neck and just thanking him. Because who else has loved you like that? Who else would do that for you? Suffer a brutal, anguishing death. Shameful way. It says the way of the cross was a shameful death. But he bore that shame. Knowing that it was for our good. If you all stand tonight, we'll have an altar call. But I hope that you're excited. I hope that you'll go home and read Revelation, maybe a little this weekend, and see that there's some good stuff in there. There's some good stuff. Things that we can look, look forward to. The marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm excited. What about you? He's coming back. Everything else, you know, that he's done already, he's spoken things and you've seen them fulfilled, even in your personal life, not just the scripture, but how many times have you um, had God speak something to you and you've seen it come about? So why should I think that God's going to change his mind and just after all this time, he's just going to say, forget Revelation. Y'all are just going to wander the earth for eternity. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I hope not. But things are happening. Keep your eyes open. Be watchful, like Jesus said. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Because perhaps today, Jesus might return. And one night, I hope I, I may do this one night. I, have you ever heard the sound of the shofar? The Jewish trumpet. Oh, my gosh. You know, Stephen used to play the trumpet, and he, he has his old trumpet, and he'd get out and play it every now and then. But the sound of the shofar is not, nothing like what I think of as a trumpet. You know, what you probably think of as a trumpet. One night we'll have to play that, but... Because it says at the sound of the last trump, we're going to hear every ear will hear it and every eye will behold him Amen. when he splits those eastern skies. Amen. Are you going to be ready? Amen. I want you to be ready. I want you to be there with me. Amen. Hugging his neck, dancing for joy. We've got so much to look forward to. We're not just going to be sitting around on clouds playing harps, Jesse. There'll be work to do. Because, I mean, that would get old after a while. You got to admit. That would get old. But I'm sure my God has plans that you haven't even imagined. So get excited about eternity. Get excited about being reunited with those that have gone on. And in the meantime, let's talk to our families and tell them, Perhaps today Jesus could be coming. Are you ready? And all it takes is putting your faith and trust in him. Amen. Let's find us a place to pray tonight.